So what what is the process that you're working with? Well, okay. Now the let, let's just like uh, now now we're in the black and white series. Like like all of these are of the umbrella either the black and white series or the rain town series. Like like this one, like the and this like all began a hair series. So oh nice. Yeah. It's like it all um The whole um, the whole idea of li like like this one has the rain town uh, title. Uh, on some nights, Wanda felt like she was the queen of rain town. Oh, nice! Is that rain town? Is that Seattle? Nice. Is it like a mythical mythologizing of Seattle sort of thing? Yep. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Betty couldn't get going in rain town without two cups of coffee and a smoke to jumpstart her day. Nice. So is it like a Seattle series? This one that you're that you're working with, or um. Well, yeah, mythical Seattle, made up Seattle. The Rain, the Rain Town series is sort of a, an offshoot of the Black and White series. And Tell me about the Black and White series. Well, it it sort of is like the idea of. I've been working abstract for a long time, and then all of a sudden, I just thought, you know, people, people like to look at people. You know, and I started, you know, this series where, they all have people in them, I, I, you know, they all, to some degree, they all have people interacting in this way, and like with life and nature or technology, there's something going on, you know, they're in their own mind, they're thinking or feeling something. And what does abstraction mean to you? What was, what was the abstract, what was abstract about the work that you were talking about earlier? Um, well, it, like, the, the work leading up to, like, like, these are two newer pieces that are, like, going back to, like, using figurative and abstract mixed together. But it's like what I was doing previously was, like, pure abstraction. So now I'm more uh, joining the two, more making the two uh, one, one element, you know, whereas, like, I couldn't do that before. But all of it came out of the black and white series. If it weren't for that, then, you know... Like, like this one is a companion piece to the one up there with the guy with the fish head. This is called, uh, uh, there's one in every family. So then the abstract pieces were ones that had no people in them were were not yeah, a pure abstraction yeah no you know that's how i worked for years and years and years and then once i started working in black and white and just you know, purely from the idea of uh, working figuratively working with the idea of telling a story they all tell stories in some way they all you know i'm thinking what are the characters thinking it's like a little vignette a short story you know what are the characters thinking what's going on in their lives so how long have you been working um, uh, with uh, with collage? Uh, since the mid '80s. Oh, nice. A long time. <laughs> in C in Seattle, um, the entire time, or where did where did you come from? Uh, New York City. That's where it started. New York City. Yeah. Nice. This is called Amy was glad Andy had told her about her friend Jill, but Judy seemed like more than a friend. <laughs> so were the abstract pieces the first pieces then? Yeah, yeah, I've, I've got some around, you know, but the but these are the what people started noticing, like uh, like the gallery owner uh, uh, Lori Lori Tierney at Ghost Gallery. She asked me after she gave me the show at uh, uh, Solo Bar. She's like, "So, what changed? What happened?" I said, "I think I just turned a corner." So. I think that's the best, uh, the best explanation, the best way of describing what happened. I turned a corner. Nice. Uh, it's simple. It's clear. This one kind of, this one is one of the ones that are in color from, the, this is also in the first year of the Black and White series. So 2014 was the year of the Black and White series. And this one, I, it, it, it was a natural fit of like, using elements from a magazine like an ad that had nothing to do with the people in it <laughs> and had a good uh, a good humorous take on things so language seems to be something that you use sparingly in the work 
words seem to be something they use sparingly, at least in the newest stuff, right? Yeah. Or have you just not gotten to putting in the words yet in the new pieces, or well, there is that like a conscious at the beginning, thing? Uh, with the black and white series, like the from the beginning, it was important to incorporate words, and I think I'll get back to that. But right now, uh, I'm kind of getting back to it gradually, like in the newer pieces, like some of the newer pieces, and like a word or two. You know, in the color pieces. But with these, it was sort of like leave in the words that flowed in naturally. You know, leave in the ones that were there. Um. Is there a certain era, certain feeling, a certain. Um... Yeah, it's, uh, well, um, like the piece. Um, Like that one, I think the the woman on the phone up there, you you know, uh, lucky day is like one of the for like this one and life were some of the, one of the first ones. Here we go. This is one of the first ones that I actually redid this one, but I like this one still. Nice. So so I mean, you're right to pick up that there's a different kind of energy in in these, but for me, it's like getting incorporating it and going back to it is something I'm going to do but in the meantime it's like how do I make them bigger how do I how do I do this but then how do I make it so they would fit in the gallery right how do I make it so they they take up more space so people see them in a different way and like the the ones I'll show you the ones that are in the closet because I don't think you saw those shows I don't know if they were uh, the show that I had at the both Steve's and Ghost Gallery had like the other part of the series, the ones that are in the closet. So I'll follow you. Yeah, we can, we can make a, a walking tour. There you go. Up to that. But these three are new. Uh, I'll show you the piece in the bathroom. So there's four here. Oh, one of them. Yeah, these these will oh, all cool. be in the show. It's funny with the pillows, it really looks very rational. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the one on the wall here that's not finished, and the one up there, uh, which is from a book cover. It's called All Hail the Free Republic of Cascadia. This one? Yeah. Oh, no, I can't do that. <laughs> uh, prepare to be amazed by the bathroom. Oh, cool. Okay. I mean, that could be a piece, right? That is a piece. <laughs> I like the hanging, uh, the hanging scissors. Hanging scissors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a great wall. Uh, it, it's, it's evolved. It's, it's always in a state of flux. I take things down. I put them back up. I, I just learned recently the whole trick with uh, paper clips. But, uh, this is a show I actually saw, like the cover of Art on Paper. This is a show I saw in 1980. It was in Times Square. It was like uh, 41st and 7th. So it was like, you know, right in the heart of Times Square. Nice. So, 1980. 1980. And there's that wall over there on top of the map. I'm glad that you're reacting the way you did to the um, um, black and whites because that's that's what led to everything that's happening now. But at the same token, by the same token, it's like I want to mm -hmm. work beyond it. And you have to make yourself happy. Yeah, yeah. Like um, kind of play Prince. That's right. Mm -hmm. Ginsburg. I saw him um, he, at uh, at uh, UNR University of Nevada when I was an undergrad, University of Nevada Reno. That's where I did my undergrad. So, how long were you in New York? Eight years. Yeah, it's like one. At, well, for years I worked. Um, 
abstract, I think, because of the uh, Kurt Schwitters was like my main influence for that, and, and he still is an influence, but in a different way. I mean, more formalism, the more formal elements. So, you know, and now that's why it's like looking at Rauschenberg's work. It's like I see the outgrowth, how he came from Schwitters. In a in a in a way, it's like without Schwitters, there wouldn't be a Rauschenberg, and without what I'm doing now with like some of the abstract pieces that were like. Like this will be in the show. So it's like a combination of uh, figurative and abstract. Very nice. Here's one I like. It's a mixed media piece. Like that one. You know, I mean, I think that now, I mean, some of the pieces that sold after people started looking at my work was the earlier work, not the newer stuff. But but they were figurative. Like there's a piece. Like these two are both from there. Oh, nice. Very nice. So, so it's been a, a transition. It's been a time of all this stuff. But, yeah. So, so this piece, I mean, I, I think, like, the title of the show comes from this piece, New Games for a Goddess, which is, I think, one of the pieces, for me, that is kind of like uh, a direction. It's like, I could definitely see doing this as a series, and like why the, the white one is sort of like, it would be nice to do the opposite, but I could go back and do a whole series where there's, like, black and then white on top of black. Right. You know, whether it's like strictly on can like, you know, on canvas or on wood or whatever. It's like I like the sort of like the film noir quality mm -hmm. of like yeah. that. And then I found this great image of like a film, you know, or like a showing and, and there's something kind of like you know, the subject matter of you know, women, sensuality. And then the title is just really fun. It's kind of like noirish, you know. So And still at the same time there's an abstraction to it all. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, which is part of the fun of doing all these. Yeah, you have to keep it fun for yourself, as I was saying earlier. This is the very first one of this whole, of working on wood. This was, uh, I'm not even sure the year anymore, but it's like definitely like the first one and the second one was uh, bought from uh, Steve Gilbert's studio, uh, the first show I had there, or the nice. second show. So.